Hello guys, welcome to Ashley Lancelot Show. We are going to be talking about how to use a Nith and a Dryad. Uh, we're going to be doing the D&D 5th edition and Pathfinder 2. I hope you like the painting of the, the Nith that I was doing on it. I just, you know, finished painting it. I haven't really started halfway and, re and starting to finish it towards the end. Um, if you like this instead of seeing my face and i will actually post a lot of painting videos with me describing that particular creature or monster or race for that as well there uh, so we're gonna start with fit dnd uh fifth edition uh then we'll start with pathfinder 2 i'm gonna talk more about the the nymph and the dryad how you use them and the stats block and what they have on the books as well they do not have the nymph in the monster manual you have to look at the 5e srd uh, for the uh, the fifth edition, uh, but the Pathfinder 2 does have it. If you guys are interested in doing uh, me doing 3.5 version of it and a Pathfinder 1 version of it, please comment down below. Subscribe, like, and share if you enjoyed the video as well. Uh, Dryad and Nith are very actually uh, interesting um, monsters to use. They're fate uh, tree. Fa uh, they're tree phase, uh, basically protector of the forest, and usually. If the forest is very healthy and big, uh, you see more dryad. Usually there's one nymph controlling the whole forest and basically the guardian of the forest. Uh, make sure nothing uh, goes in and out. And the Pathfinder version of it, um, they go all the way back to the Kingsmaker campaign. If you ever played the Kingsmaker uh, campaign on tabletop, you always can play the Kingsmaker of it in the... Um, uh, the the PC game up uh, uh, that they had where I played it. That there's a playlist of me of the gameplay for that as well. Uh, please check it out. I don't know if it's on this channel or an A and L Let's Let's Play channel. The links down below for that as well. Uh, usually the they came from the, the Pathfinder version of it. They came from the First Order. Uh, it's a very complicated storyline for that as well. If you want me to explain more about the First Order, the Fade, the Gods, how all became to be, uh, please down put in the comments as well. How to use these uh use these uh creatures in the game? Uh, they are majority neutral good. I'll put that out there. Neutral good. They do good for it uh, unless there a, a a poacher comes by and attacks animal, not justifying the kill using for greed, or cutting down a tree. Uh, usually they retaliate and attack. A lot of times you have actually a good quest line from uh from a dryad or a nymph if the forest is getting sick let's say there's like an evil druid uh is sickening this land or a cleric that is uh defiling this land you know you have the the quest line for that to actually help uh the forest dwellers out as well and they can give you a lot of good loot a lot of good adventures you can actually have like you know they want you to go around and destroy all these goblins and orcs as rooting their forest and using their lumber for you know their own gain uh, you know stuff like that there's a lot of components you can do with these as well there are evil nymphs they are evil dryads um that's gonna be more towards the end for it how you use it you know these creatures are so beautiful that you have to uh roll a constitution save or fort save depending which book you're using because they're so beautiful you get blinded by the beauty and also followed by a wisdom charisma save and a wisdom save. um Ooh. sorry i will say due to the fact that you know they can charm you as well into doing things sometimes they can charm you in ways that go against your party or use you as a slave uh for a long duration of the time until the spell was broken there are a lot you know Reason why I like using these characters, especially if you have a druid class or you have a lawful good class, sometimes, you know, you know, if we go like a huge forest, let's say Neverwinter Forest or Cherry Road Forest, this is the Forgotten Realms Forest. Uh, there are a lot of evil being creatures as in this forest, and they, you can, they can come out to you or you find them, or they need of help. Something they can do telepathically. They can go to your dreams. Uh, give you hints where side quests you can do side quests with these a lot of var variables in the in my opinion as well so you know nymphs are very powerful um they're very frail in their actual form but 
they, they have other creatures they can call out call out tree ants the list goes on you know you know you have these dire wolves come out of nowhere and you know and maul you and or hunt you and, and they can see they see you anywhere in the forest you know they can spy easily as well uh, it, it is a very uh unique type uh for it um i know i'm gonna read the dryad part of the 5e and hope you guys you know you guys can skip it because i'm gonna go short short length is very short for the 5 5e version of it like i said i just got the uh 5e srd uh if only you guys i uh, might put a link down for you guys or you guys just google it Nick google 5e nymph it's right there for you guys to use a nymph as a module i'll be reading a lot more for the pathfinder 2 version of it there's a lot more of a an outline for that as well um so dryad uh, on the 5e monster manual travelers answer a force might catch a glimpse of a feminine form fitting through the trees Warm laughter hangs on the air, drawing those who hear it deeper into the emerald shadow. Uh, they have three different types of, of skills, face skills. Basically, tree bound, powerful fae will sometimes blend lesser fae spirit to trees, transform them into dryads. Um, this falls in love with a mortal, and that love is forbidden. Yes, uh, of, usually a lot of time, fae fae type cannot be loved with a mortal. And for punishment, they do turn into trees and become dryad. And it, it, you know, you can have like a love romance story or a side quest for that matter of fact. So, yes. Um, and let's see here. Um, and drag emerge from a tree and travel the lands around it, but the tree remains her home and, and roots to the, uh, to the world. As long as the tree remains healthy and unharmed, the dryad stays forever youthful and alluring. The tree is harmed, she suffers. If the tree is ever destroyed, a dryad descends into madness. That's where the evil part comes into it as well. You can have like a very sickly forest and have a dryad and other tree folk just go against you in every other way as well. Reclusive Fae. Dryad acts as a guardian of their woodland, uh, diminishes, uh, yeah, she's sly and reclusive. They watch interlopers from the tree. It drives a uh, strike by the beauty of stranger. My investigate more closely, perhaps even try to lure the individual away to be charmed. Dryads work with other uh, sylvan uh, creatures to defend their forest. Unicorn tree ants and satars uh, live alongside them. In addition to druids and share the dru uh, and the dryads with devotion to the woods they call home. Uh, the other one is woodland magic. Dryads can speak with plants and animals. They can teleport from one tree to another, luring interlopers away from their groves. If pressed, a, if pressed, a dry can be gall humanoid with their her enchantments, turning enemies into friends. They also know a handful of useful spells. So dryads are very, very useful in a way that, that they can do a lot of things as well. And here's our, their stats, uh, armor class 11, uh, 16 with bark skin, if you cast bark skin on itself. Uh, that's about 22 health points, you can roll 5d8, usually I don't really roll the hit points, uh, I usually just use the one that has in the books. Speed is 30, strength is 10, dex 12, con 11, intel, intel 14, with wisdom 15, charisma 18, uh, it skills is perception plus 4, stealth is plus 5. It has dark vision 60 feet, passive per perception is 14, language is elvish and sylvan, uh, challenge rating is 1, um, but you can up upscale it as well if you need to. Uh, initiate spellcasting, try to imitate in innate spellcast ability in is charisma. Uh, DC spell save was 14. Um, it has uh, at will druid craft. Three per day uh, each is Entangled and Goodberry. One a day each is uh, Barkskin, Pass Without Trace, and Shillelagh. Uh, magic Resistance uh, has a saving throw, has advantage of saving throw against spells and other magical effect. They can speak with plants and beasts. Uh, tree side once on her turn, the dry can use 10 feet of her movements to step magically into one living tree. Uh, within her reach emerging from the second living tree within 60 feet uh, uh, the, uh, the first tree appearing in an unoc unoccupied space within 5 feet the sec uh, of the second tree 
both trees must be larger or bigger than the creature itself. Uh, it, it has a club, plus two attack, or a plus six if it's a shillelagh. Um, this is 1d4, or 1d8 plus four if it's a shillelagh. Uh, Fae Charm. Um, the Dryad targets one human or beast. She uh, can see within 30 feet of her. The target can see the Dryad. It must see on a DC 14 wisdom save or saving throw or be magically charmed. The charmed creature regards the Dryad as a trusted friend to be heeded and protected. Although the target isn't under the Dryad control, it takes the Dryad request or action in the most favorable way it can. Each time Dryad or its allies or anything harmful to a target, it can repeat the saving throw, ending the effect of itself on a success. So if he charmed you, if the Dryad charmed you, and the Dryad tells you to kill another fr uh, one of your friend friends, uh, the, the spell will break. Otherwise, the effect lasts 24 hours or until the Dryad dies. So you have a whole day if you fail again before the Dryad. To do her bidding. If the target saving throw is successful, the target is immune to Dryad's Fae Charm for the next 24 hours. So if you save against that throw, you're you're not affected for 24 hours of it. Uh, Dryad can have no more, no more than one human and up to three beasts charmed at a time. So, but you know, you're the DM. However you do it is however you uh you know want want to do it. Because a lot of times you use homebrews or you story as a basis of using these creatures this is a nymph on the srd uh site his armor cost is 14 hit points 40 a speed is 30 um i don't think i had to read, read you the attributes for it but the skills insight plus seven perception plus seven stealth plus six uh immunities to charm dark vision 60 per 60 feet uh passive perception 17 language is sylvan but also common as well in elvish College rating is four. Uh, is, it has amphibious, can breathe air and water. Innate spell ha has a charisma DC save fourteen. Up high race at up to sixteen or an eight sixteen because uh, a, a nymph is like a, a higher version of a dryad in a way. If you cast falling druid spells, requires no component. That will detect magic, guidance, light. Uh, two per day, cure light wounds, good berry or lesser restoration. One a day. Grasping Ride or Tree Stride. Uh, magic Resistant has a sense of advantage against spells that hit her or affects her. Speaks with beast and plants. Has a club and Binding Beauty. Uh, make a Constitution 15 saving throw. Or if it fails, is magically bl uh, blinded. So you have to roll 15 Constitution. Or, you be, or the character will be blinded uh, by looking at it as well. And I bet this has that charm thing as well, but you can add in as well that the dryad has. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Nymph is dedicated protector of nature. They are very, uh, they are very inquisitive and continue to explore unknown areas. They fey live very much the moment and appreciate every new creature and location they discover. The curiosity has also gotten them into trouble. Also, Nymph does not bomb by trying. I think they are bound by a tree, but they can have lovers and quarrels with humanoid. I think that's okay because nymph is like a higher version of it. Uh, one with nature, the nymph is deeply connected to the environment around it. An attack on the world is considered an attack on them. Nymphs often make their homes in rugged and isolated areas. Dazzling beauty, incredibly attractive. These often can blind a newcomer with the beauty the inhabitants of Feyland those to avert their eyes from these fakes so yeah so this is the pathfinder 2 version of it as well uh i believe it's like three pages long no four pages long so okay uh i'll be reading this uh probably skipping a few stuff but uh I'll be reading as much as possible I can do. This is the the, the, the Nith uh, uh, family. And then so a family of fae that takes the form of beautiful humanoids, which was a humanoid with humans, sorry, with elven future and have a deep association with the nat natural world. Those most common of their kinds are the dryads, which are spirits and embodies great trees, but many other kinds of Nith's includes naiads who watch over bodies of water, all nymphs are guardians of some element of nature, typically a Pacific tree or a pond, or even in case of nymph queen, whole forest or massive bodies of water. 
So there are Naiads, uh, Dryads, uh, Nymph Queen, uh, uh, Naiad Queen, and Dryad Queen. So there are a lot of different types. So basically, the Nymphs are subcategorized to Naiads, uh, basically, protector of water, and Dryads, protector of the forest. Uh, Naiads protect streams, ponds, springs, and other natural bodies of fresh water, while most Naiads leave solitary lives to close to their chosen ward. Sometimes these nymphs uh, con congregate in co uh, coven like groups where water uh, turbulence meet, performing great magic, blessing the water of the lands. Because Naiads bond their body of water permanent from flexible, they are the nymphs most likely to interact with humanoids and even visit their settlements on occasion. Unlike other nymphs, Naiads occasionally become venturers, uh, especially with when dark forests seek to despoil nature or otherwise threaten the land, joining forces with others to prevent the corruption of nature. Uh, Naiad has a plus six, low light vision, common, uh, languages common, elven, sylvan, speaks with animal. Uh, skills are acrobatic plus six, athletics plus three, Diplomacy plus seven, nature plus six, stealth plus six, survival plus four. Uh, as wild empathy, Naiads can use diplomacy to make an impression on and make very simple requests of animals. Uh, AC 16, fort saves plus three, reflex plus six, will plus eight. Has HP of 20, weakness is cold iron, three, and resistance fire, three. A water dependent, a Naiad bounce through a spring pool bond. Similar size water feature uh, while within 300 feet of her bonded body of water. She can use her innate a tidal surge at will. She doesn't recover hit points or reduce the drain condition when resting beyond that range. Unlike most or other nymphs, she doesn't suffer penalties from being apart from her bonded body of water. Nice can perform a 24 hour ritual to bond herself to a new body of water. So this is how they basically uh, go around and uh, become venturers. And you can add that in your campaign too as well. Um, it's a speed of 25, speed, a swim 25. Uh, melee is aqueous feet as plus eight, uh, 1d6 bludgeoning as a primal idiot spell, DC 17. Um, first level spell is charm, create water and tidal surge. And uh, constant second, speak with animal, has water healing, uh, has Plus one hit point every ten minutes if she is bonded by uh by a body of water. Okay, this is uh dryad. Uh dryads are a fake guardian of the tree and creature who dwells in wood wooded areas. They prefer using indirect method to this this dissuade those who would harm their sacred groves and beloved forest. But they are not above using enchantments to enlist the aid of allies when Evil tents cannot be dissuaded with words alone. It's times of peace, Dryas happily lives secluded lives inside their trees, and the community and harmony with nature might not even realize a dry lives nearby. Though they watch over all the forests around them, Dryas are <sighs> tied to a specific tree, usually an oak. Dryad who are bound to another type of tree are fundamentally the same but they may differ in temperament and appearance to match their words. For instance, uh, cherry tree dryads have beautiful pink coloration and concerning themselves with a fragile beauty of life. So different trees, they can have different appearances. So, you know, they can speak common, elven, sylv sylvan, and with plants. Um, skills are acrobatic plus six, athletic plus five, Crafting plus seven, a diplomacy plus nine, nature plus thirteen, stealth plus nine, survival plus twelve, uh, nature empathy. I think I already read that for you. AC nineteen, fort is sixteen, reflex is eleven, will is ten, HP fifty five, cold iron five, and fire five. It is tree dependent. Uh, it can go tree to tree within three hundred feet of it. Uh, she must uh, attempt a DC 18 save every hour or increase the sickness value of 1. At 34 hours, she becomes drained 1, while the value increases to 1 additional. Uh, she had this is if she moves from 300 feet away from her tree, and she gets penalties for it uh, for every hour. Um, speed is 25. Melee, she has a branch uh, plus 12 hit. 
Uh, damage 1d12 plus 2. Damn, that gotta hurt. Uh, she has a, a primal in it spell. DC save for that is 21. Attack plus 11. Fifth uh, is tree stride. Fourth is charm. Um, charm suggestion. Um, third, 12. Second, entangled at will. Tree shape at will. Cantrip. Uh, second, tangle foot. Constant. Fourth, speak with plants. The tree, tree melt. Dry touches the tree of enough volume to contain her. Merge into it for as long as she wishes. She can cast spell while inside as long as the spell doesn't require a line of, of effect outside the tree. She can hear but not see. What's going on outside the tree, she can dismiss this effect. Uh, significant physical damage dealt to the tree. Expels the dryad from the tree. And deals 3d6 damage to her. Cast while expels the dryad without dealing damage the giant uses ability on her bonnet tree she intend enter an ex, ex, uh, extra dimensional living space with the tree um the tree melt gains the extra dimensional trait the dryad can bring up the two other creature with her when entering her home within her bound tree the dryad can still be expelled from the spaces above Okay, now this is where we at the Nymph Queen. Uh, Nymph Queens are a powerful nymph that rules over entire regions of untouched wilderness, not just single trees or ponds. Every uh, variety of nymphs can have a queen. Nymph, um, Naiad's queens are among the most prominent and more often interacted with nearby mortals, though some uh, scholars refer to Naiad Queen as simply nymphs. Uh, nymph Queen's ability, a Nymph Queen is 6 to 10 levels higher than an ordinary Nymph of the same type with enhanced numeral statistics and improved strikes to, to match. Nymph Queen Wards is a significant region and she strengthens and vivifies this territory with her presence. Nymph Queens are not dependent on their wards and lose their corresponding ability, such as Dryad's tree dependent ability. Instead, they gain the tied to the land ability as described below. A Nymph Queen also gains a Nymph Beauty Aura and the Focus Beauty Action, which they have uh, ver um, varying effects based on the Queen original type. She gains the Inspiration ability, allowing there to bestow a gift of inspiration on those who catches their fancy and the change shape ability and change her form. Finally, she gains Primal Repair spell as a druid of her level. And she can do chain shape just like polymorph. I'm not going to read their skills or stats. I'm just going to read, uh, so just letting you know, um, read the Nyan Queen's description and Dryad Queen's description. And that'll be pretty much it. Um, Nyad Queen rules over a pristine wilderness center on untouched lakes or other bodies of fresh water. Bard song and artist painting of this tends to depict Nyad's queen in their slightly more humanoid form, which they don't don when they make the rare journey to civilized land to earn their allies or gauge threats. Uh, most Nyad queens treat those who respect the domain with kindness, but they are fierce and quick in limiting foes. Their blinding beauty and breath of offensive spells make Nyad's queen fierce opponent and forced into a fight. Uh, Nyad, uh, sorry, Dryad Queen, uh, uh, Hen of Dryads rules over entire forest or a portion of the incredible large forest, leading and protecting all Dryads within. Hen of Dryads often, ha uh, have strong relationship with powerful and deadly fae, working together in a dualistic way to pick their difference with, uh, with a Nama Dryad representing nature wandering and the other fate representing nature's wrath. So that is it. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you guys like the reading I just did or explain the beginning how to use them. Uh, let me know down in the comments below uh, if you guys enjoy it. How would you guys use your Dryad or your Nymphs? Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe, like, and share, and I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day, guys. Bye.